The book of Daniel is the tale of two cities, Jerusalem and Babylon. Note the five transitions of power in the book, the first and last being the most significant. In chapter one, it's from Jerusalem to Babylon, heralding the beginning of the times of the Gentiles. In chapters five and six, power transfers from Babylon to Medo-Persia. In chapter eight, from Persia to Greece, and in chapters 10 and 11, from Greece to Rome. The final transition in chapters 11 and 12, described in Revelation as the collapse of Babylon, is the transfer of Antichrist's empire to the rightful heir of the universe, our Lord Jesus Christ. Full circle, it's from Babylon back to Jerusalem, but this time with a king worthy of the name. Included in the Ketubim, or later writings in the Hebrew Bible, Daniel is both historical and prophetic. Daniel, meaning God is judge, was part of the deportation from Judah in 606 BC, being about 20 at the time. Three years later, his ministry began deep in the heart of Babylon. He must have been more than 90 when he died. Daniel's ministry spanned the reigns of four kings, Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar in Babylon, Darius and Cyrus of Medo-Persia. Sometimes prophetic preachers skip the stories at the beginning of Daniel and go directly to the visions and dreams that outline world history, but that's a mistake. The story of the king's dream, for example, offers a foundational reason to believe what Daniel says in the rest of the book. In the royal palace, Daniel was surrounded by fortune tellers and rent-a-prophets. How would you know whom to trust? Here's the acid test. The king wants these men not simply to give an interpretation of his dream, but first to reveal what the dream was itself. This they cannot do. When Daniel is put on the case, after a night spent with God, he does just that. Anyone can pretend to predict the future, but how can it be verified? So before Daniel speaks of the future, he reveals the past. This can be verified by the king. Yes, Daniel speaks for God. Dr. David Gooding has shown that the author aligns chapters 1 and 6, 2 and 7, 3 and 8, 4 and 9, and 5 with the last three chapters. Chapters 1 and 6 present two tests. In chapter 1, it's Daniel and his friends insisting on purity and refusing the king's food. In chapter 6, it's Daniel insisting on prayer in spite of the king's command. Chapters two and seven present two views of world governments. The first is Superman, symbolized in metals of decreasing value and increasing strength. And it's true that the world's superpowers can provide the world with great services, but often for that, they demand a loyalty that only God deserves. The other view is of ravenous animals, but wait, these are men acting like animals. And that is a graphic illustration of the way superpowers often act. Now chapters three and eight show the outworking of these. In chapter three, the king makes the image he saw. Here people are impelled to worship it, much like the antichrist at the end. In chapter eight, they're forbidden to worship the true God. But in both cases, God's faithful remnant are supernaturally preserved. Chapters four and nine describe the insanity, the results from self-worship. In chapter four, we get a display of the difference between a man and a beast. If the king is going to act like a beast, well then let him live like one. He ends up hobbled in one of his royal gardens for seven times. Meanwhile, in chapter nine, Daniel prays for a remnant that has been in captivity for 70 years. But God reveals to him his purpose, always grander than man's, for the nation, and describes 70 times seven years. This leads to the last great battle when these wild animal men are defeated by God's little lamb. Chapter five, see Revelation 17 through 19, prefigures the doom of the nations when at last God writes their judgment on the wall. The last three chapters, 10 through 12, answer to this, giving the struggle for sovereignty in history as a preview for the end. But the script has already been written, called here, the writing of truth. Daniel's God can reveal the course of history right to the end because our Lord Jesus is the planner of the ages. History is his story and he will triumph gloriously. 
And that's our scripture snapshot of the book of Daniel.